Her family says she was a loving, spirited little girl who could light up a room. But now all they have are memories of four-year-old Gabby Barrett, who was murdered earlier this year. Dental decay, all her teeth were rotten. Vomit in her lungs. Hemorrhaging in her eyes, caused by fighting for air. Gabby was loved. She is a beautiful child. Her smile was outstanding. She definitely knew how to light up someone's day. Gabby Barrett was an innocent four-year-old girl who went through unimaginable horrors at the hands of her monster mother, Candace Renee Diaz. Candace had found a new boyfriend and wanted to start a new family with him, but poor Gabby was on the way. On New Year's Day in 2018, a day that was supposed to be filled with love and celebration, Gabby's life was ended by her mother in the most inhuman way. Even though this story is filled with nothing but sorrow and savagery, it must be told to highlight the danger of child negligence. So let's start from the beginning. Candace Renee Diaz was the mother of Gabby Barrett. She was also the common denominator in this case. Candace had suffered from a rough childhood. Though it was not nearly as gruesome as what she put her own daughter through, it still left an imprint on her as a person. Her mother was also a neglectful person who couldn't take proper care of her kids. When Candace was four years old, her mother left her with her grandmother, who was an alcoholic, and it resulted in her almost dying after her house caught on fire. She ended up with multiple third-degree burns and had to undergo multiple surgeries to make a full recovery. After the horrific incident, Candace was taken from her mother's care and went to live with a relative named Cynthia Diaz. Her mother and grandmother were also arrested and charged with second degree criminal for putting a baby's life in danger. In June 2000, Cynthia was given parental custody of Candace because her mother stopped communicating with her, providing no child care, and eventually disappeared from her life. You might be wondering where Candace's father was. Well, this man was never in her life. At the time, he was incarcerated for unknown reasons, and when Cynthia petitioned to become Candace's permanent guardian, her father wanted to dispute the petition, but eventually withdrew his objection. Like her mother, he disappeared from her life and provided no parental support for his daughter. Finally, Candace, who was seven years old at this point, could settle down with a guardian who actually cared for her. The story was meant to have a happy ending, but sadly not in this case. After Cynthia became Candace's legal parent, the two moved from the state of Kentucky to Michigan. Everything seemed fine for a while until Candace reached her teenage years, also known as the bad decision-making years. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because a lot of young people grow out of it as they become adults. But that was not the case for Candace, as her rebel phase extended into adulthood. In her early 20s, Candace got into an intimate relationship with another young man named Kyle Barrett. And the two had a daughter, Gabrielle Renee Barrett, who was born on July 3rd, 2013. The family would call the baby Gabby for short. During this time, the couple stayed with Cynthia, but their relationship did not last as they went their separate ways when Gabby was only a few months old. Candace was left to be a young, single mother to her baby daughter. At this point, you can see that Gabby's childhood and her mother's are starting to line up, but this is only the tip of the iceberg. Later in 2015, Candace decided to pursue another relationship with Brad Edward Fields. Their relationship was serious enough for Candace to leave Cynthia's home and move in with him. The couple settled in a mobile home in Bellevue, Michigan. But Candace forgot something. She forgot her daughter, Gabby. You would think a single mother would take her kid with her when she moved, but Candace didn't do that. She decided to move in with Brad Fields and leave Gabby in the care of Cynthia so she could enjoy her new life without her daughter getting in the way. Candace's new happiness and honeymoon period were short-lived, though. Barely a year into the new relationship, law enforcement officers responded to a domestic violence incident in Brad and Candace's mobile home. It turns out that Candace and Brad were engaged in some kind of altercation, and he chased her out of the home with a firearm. Candace ended up calling 911 after fleeing the home and told the dispatcher that Brad tried to harm her with the weapon and the family dog was caught in the crossfire. He also managed to injure his leg while discharging the firearm. It's unclear whether the dog was okay after this incident. When officers arrived at the scene, the state of the home was unbelievable. The mobile home was covered in complete filth, dirty dishes, clogged sink, messy bedrooms, and there was even a rabbit locked up in an unclean cage, not to mention red stains on the floor due to Brad and the family dog's injury. The living condition was absolutely dreadful. These people shouldn't be allowed to have pets. 
let alone take care of children. The officers also recovered a ton of weapons, including firearms, knives, and non-prescribed medications. Two firearms were recovered from a hidden location in the home. One of them was unregistered, and the other had a scratched out serial number. Initially, Brad was arrested and charged with domestic violence, but Candace had a sudden change of mind and decided to drop the charges against him, claiming that he was schizophrenic and wasn't taking his medication properly, therefore he wasn't in control of his actions. She also took responsibility for the two firearms found inside their home and was charged with altering firearms. But that wasn't the end. While she was at the station, law enforcement officers searched through her belongings and found a prescription pad, and she was also charged for that. Candace earned herself two years of probation. This revelation could mean that Candace and her boyfriend were abusing medication because why on this earth would she need a prescription pad when neither of them are doctors or has the certification to prescribe medication? And this entire ordeal was because Candace reported Brad to the authorities, but she ended up taking the blame for everything. It's unbelievable how she keeps making bad choices. Brad wasn't charged with anything, not even for harming their family dog or keeping their pet rabbit in unsanitary conditions, which was unforgivable. We can only hope that someone would seize the pets from their possession. I mean, even if he was truly schizophrenic, they should have kept him in for a mental evaluation or something, but no, they didn't do anything to condemn his actions, and this decision to let him go would soon come to haunt them. Anyway, let's return to Gabby. During this time, Candace couldn't care less about her daughter, whom she left with Cynthia, her adoptive guardian. Yes, it was terrible for Candace to be so irresponsible and inconsiderate of her own baby. On the other hand, Cynthia was a much better caretaker for Gabby. This woman literally spent her entire life raising abandoned children. Gabby had a good and stable life when she was living with Cynthia. Except, when it was time for Gabby to be enrolled in preschool, Cynthia couldn't do it because she wasn't the kid's legal guardian. So Gabby had to go live with her mother. And needless to say, her home life became very different than what she was used to. A word of warning, the upcoming content about Gabby's life with her mother can be disturbing to some people because it features abuse, neglect, and abuse. Please proceed with caution. You allow him to put your child in a garbage bag when she wet herself to give her drink. Sadly, Gabby was severely mistreated by her own mother and Brad. It was reported that Candace and Brad had another daughter named Zoe at the time. It is important to mention that Zoe was not mistreated or neglected at all. For some reason, Gabby became the target of their mistreatment in the family. Apparently, Gabby had a restroom issue at home, and sometimes she would soil herself. Keep in mind that she's only four years old. It's not uncommon that babies and toddlers would have restroom problems, but the weird thing was, Gabby only had this problem at home. According to her teachers, Gabby had no issue with using the restroom whenever she needed, and she had also been potty trained. So it was speculated that Gabby's restroom issue came from stress due to mistreatment she had faced at home. To make matters worse, Brad and Candace would physically punish her whenever she had an accident. They did horrifying things and inhumane things to her as punishment and even made her take unprescribed medication, which had horrible side effects. The amount of ill treatment and negligence continued to escalate over time. It's surprising how no one found out about their mistreatment of Gabby because of the marks that she had on her face. You'd expect someone to notice, but no one did notice? On December 31st, 2017, Candace and Brad took it upon themselves to make Gabby suffer one last time. Gabby lost her life when the couple decided to leave her in a bathtub unattended. When they noticed that Gabby was unconscious, Candace called Cynthia to help her perform CPR on her daughter, which was pointless because Cynthia lived at least 30 minutes away from them. It's easy to see why the couple didn't want to call 911 because they knew they would get in trouble, but why didn't Cynthia call for help? She knows she lives far away from them while paramedics could get there right away. They didn't need her for CPR, but Cynthia came anyway, and she tried performing CPR on Gabby, which did nothing to help. Finally, the three people decided to call 911. By the time the medical emergency personnel arrived on the scene, Gabby had passed away. Candace claimed that Gabby's death was caused by the water in the bathtub because she had a habit of taking long baths. That morning, she claimed that her eldest daughter had gone to take a bath while she was in the kitchen preparing breakfast. It was about an hour later when she went to check on Gabby and found her unconscious, facing upward in the bath. Candace met me at the door and opened it and we went back to the bathroom. 
And when you went back to the bathroom, what did you observe? My granddaughter on the floor. Did you observe any other adult? Yes, Brad was in there giving her CPR. All I saw was red marks behind her calf on each leg and on her backside where her butt is. Candace provided somewhat of a reasonable explanation, yet the paramedics who responded to the scene reported that they found a lot of red marks on Gabby's body. Plus, there were no signs of water in her lungs, nor was her skin pruning like she had been taking an hour-long bath. Something didn't add up. Officers who were present on the scene said that when they arrived at the home, there was no one performing CPR on Gabby, as Cynthia had reported, and there were no traces of water in the tub or anywhere on the bathroom bathroom floors. The only thing that indicated Abby was taking a bath was her damp hair. Law enforcement officers found the situation suspicious, so they asked to search the home, but Brad would not allow them. Later, officers obtained a warrant, so they no longer needed Brad or Candace's permission to search their home and possessions. During the search, they recovered a lot of incriminating evidence, including Gabby's DNA around the home. Apparently, Brad had tried to destroy the evidence. Authorities even confiscated Candace and Brad's cell phones, where they discovered countless messages documenting the harm they inflicted on the four-year-old. According to the authorities, some of the messages were extremely graphic, especially from Brad. He would message Candace about potentially harming Gabby in the most brutal manner, and Candace would respond to it as if they were chatting about a casual suspect. After he showed you a video of him your child in the garbage bag, you, your response was, do you want some McDonald's? The autopsy was later released, and Gabby's cause of death was septic shock and child syndrome, which basically means she passed away from infections resulting from her long-term injuries. And this isn't even the worst part. It was later discovered that Gabby's physical health was in extremely terrible shape. The four-year-old had countless wounds and injuries on her body. She was also malnourished and her teeth were decaying due to the lack of care. Professionals believe Gabby was suffering from great pain until the moment she passed away. There couldn't be a more heartbreaking story. Can you believe that a mother did this to her daughter? There's no better word to describe the situation than savagery. Heartbreaking death of a four-year-old, Gabrielle Barrett of Sumter Township. Gabby was found bruised and burned back on New Year's Day. And you may remember her mother, Candace Diaz, and her mother's boyfriend, Brad Field, fled to Georgia and then were arrested eight days later. At this point, law enforcement officials had enough evidence to arrest Candace and Brad, but the two were nowhere to be found. A warrant was issued for their arrests and a bulletin was placed on their car. It was two days later when they turned themselves over to authorities and the reason why they surrendered was they had a plan or they thought they had a plan. Candace and Brad came up with a list of mental illnesses that they were diagnosed with, but hadn't been treated for. Candace blamed her rough childhood and biological mother for leaving her with so much trauma to process. She also claimed to be diagnosed with bipolar disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and anxiety. Brad told the court he was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, social anxiety, agoraphobia, and post-traumatic stress. His defense team even tried to shift the entire blame onto Candace, claiming that Brad had nothing to do with Gabby's death, but their messages proved a different story. Of course, the two were found guilty of their crimes. On October 9, 2018, Brad Fields was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Candace was supposed to receive the same sentence as Brad, but she was given a plea deal on December 5, 2018, which reduced her sentence to second-degree homicide and first-degree child abuse. She was sentenced to 30 to 60 years in prison. A mother's job is to train and nurture her child into adulthood. It's her gift to humanity, the gift of life. But you killed your daughter for the love of a bum named Bray. An unemployed, drug taken, manipulative loser. After Gabby's tragic ending, her sister Zoe was removed from the home, and her whereabouts were kept a secret. Hopefully, she will find a better home with a loving family. You might be wondering where on earth Gabby's biological father was. While Kyle Barrett was in prison for other crimes the entire time, he had no idea what was happening to his daughter. The last time Kyle saw his daughter alive was before he was arrested. He was released two days after Gabby passed away and never got to see his baby girl again. Gabby was loved. She is a 
beautiful child. Her smile was outstanding. She definitely knew how to light up someone's day. Do you think Candace should have received a higher sentence? Or maybe she shouldn't have received a plea deal at all? Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell button for notifications.